Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we're going to look into the set value API, which coming from the use form hook. So the primary goal of this API is allow you to programmatically update your input value and also updating associated form state. So let's get into the code sandbox and getting things in practical. In this code sandbox, I have set up a basic React hook form template and also register an input. So first thing, let's actually try to updating the input value programmatically. So what you want to do is you want to invoke, you want to retrieve the set value API from the use form and creating a button. Let's call the set value, give it a type as a button, on click event, and let's update the value so the API syntax is always going to be the name of your inputs, the value, and bunch of options. So first, let's get in the first name, which is one thing great about TypeScript support with the React talk form. As you can see, we're straight away pumping you with the potential input value coming from your type. First name, let's give it a bill. And that's it. This is pretty much the basic way of updating a value. And then we can submit, we got the value updated. Notice one thing that we actually didn't trigger any re-render at the root of the application. Reason for being that is React Talk Form is targeting an individual input value and being able to isolating that re-render without impacting the root of your application. So when does a re-render actually get happened when you're invoking set value? And that's what are some of the other options that therefore when you're using set value. For example, that if you want to updating your input state for dirty fill, we can set the flag of shit dirty to be true. And this is the case if we're actually subscribing to the form state of is dirty or dirty fills. So let's just quickly console log out the result and see that in action. Now realize that we did it providing a default value as first name empty. So that indicates that anything get changed in the first name will result a dirty fields update and also is dirty flag to become true. So now if we submitting the set value, we actually successfully seen that is dirty become true because we changed it and also we actually registered the dirty fields as well. So if you revert that back, the form state is updated relatively. Cool. So that's one of the options. Let's have a look at the other options, which is should touch. We can set that to be true as well. And that way we're actually informing React talk form that please updating the touch the fill as well. So we know whether the input has been interact with the customer. So now let's switch to touched. If I submit that value, the touch field gets updated, the inputs gets updated. And notice, importantly, the re-render does get happen as well to informing the form state gets updated. Cool. So these are the two form states update which allowed with the option. Now the last option is should validate. So this allowed us to actually trigger the validation that are associated with that input. So for example, if I give a validation rule, say minimum length to be six. And really this, if you're not familiar with the validation, you can check out the native form constraint API. Really this is telling us that the minimum length of your input should be at least six characters. So in this case, with bill being updated, it's only got four characters, so we should be expecting some arrow get thrown down to the form. So let's actually subscribing to the arrow state. So we can see what are the arrows get thrown down. Cool. And let's just quickly clean this up and try to update and here we go 
This indicates there's something wrong with the form and successfully updating the arrows object. And not just arrow. And if you setting the mode to be unchanged, notice this is a requirement. If you're actually subscribing to is valid, then is valid will get updated as well. So we can, for example, we can start with is valid. This should return us um, false to start with because minimum length should be oops uh, sorry minimum length is six so let's adding required equal true in here so the validation will fail because the initial when amount it's actually empty cool and let's get rid of the making sure bill is a little bit longer like that and now if we setting the value now it should be a valid input and it should expecting value is valid to become true cool we got that successfully working Cool. This is basically some of the options that hidden inside the set value. Uh, the reason we're doing that is we want the set value to be bare minimum as possible. So being the lightest things happen on your form, just updating the value. If you want to update in different state, you can always option um, omit in. Cool. So what if you want to update a bunch of inputs? Say, for example, if you have um, an a group of objects inputs so for example your details and then we have first name and last name now we have two inputs the good thing about TypeScript is look we already start seeing some of the type error because it's just not reflecting what we have for the default value so now we can actually having two inputs in here and we can updating them in a single set value API if we're using your detail as the parent node and give first name and bill last name as law just by that we can success successfully updating both input so really what that does behind the scenes is React talk form will actually look into the second uh, object that you supplied. We actually do a recursive check and then combine them into a form that can notify that, that this input does existing in your form and hence update them. So this is basically the same as doing this basically. Oops, I'm uh, sorry, last name. Cool. So in fact, this is actually probably the recommended way of doing things because it's most optimal uh, in terms of performance as well because we just have to look up the input name and then setting the value rather doing the recursive check inside your object to determine whether there is input that's existing on your form or not. Cool, I think I've covered everything around the set value API. One of the good things, all the things that I mentioned, they all get captured in the documentation. So you can always refer to the documentation to see what are um, some of the options that does existing in the set value and we also have a bunch of example in here this can work with use fuel array as well which we're going to cover in the later tutorial uh, which is going to be more of a vast topic so cool i'm going to end up in here i hope you enjoyed this video i see you in the next one bye